So the next thing that we'll be find out, finding out is proportion of tax incidence on buyers. So we'll be finding out the fraction of the tax incidence which is based on buyers. So that would essentially be the share of the tax incidence on buyers by the total tax income uh, or by the total tax that has been imposed. Now this total tax, as I mentioned before, this would be S of B, this E2, E3, and E3, E4 is essentially S of S. So if this entire section is T, this PB, PS is T, then T can be decomposed into SB plus SS. So T equal to SB plus SS. That is exactly what I have done. I have split T to SB by SS. Next step, what I've done is I have divided both numerator and denominator by SB. So I have divided the numerator with SB as well as the numerator with SB. What happens then is the numerator SB, SB gets cancelled and we are left with one. And in the denominator, SB from this section gets cancelled and this part we are left with SS by SB. So we have one by one plus SS by SB. This is a single term. Next, what we do is, you see from this part, we can replace SS by SB with ED by ES. So that is what I exactly do. Then again, I multiply ES on both numerator and denominator, and I'm essentially left with this expression. So you see the proportion of tax incidence on buyers is essentially given by the expression ES by ES plus ED. So that is the expression or the, the expression which uh, determines the fraction of tax incidence, which is faced by buyers. Similarly, we have the fraction of tax incidence which is faced by sellers. We use the same approach. So we write SS by the total tax amount, which is T, and we split T with S to SB plus SS. Then again, we divide this time. Uh, for this expression, we have divided both the numerator and denominator with SB. And for this expression, we divide both the numerator and denominator with SS. So in the numerator, we get one because SS and SS gets canceled. And in the denominator, we are left with SB by SS because this part does not get cancelled and this part gets cancelled, so we get 1. So we have 1 by SB by SS plus 1 and this segment, again, we essentially take the reciprocal of this relation. So if SB by SS, uh, so if SS by SB is ED by ES, then SB by SS will be ES by ED. So I take the reciprocative relation and I get 1 by ES by ED plus one and I again multiply ED on both sides to make it look uh, rather better and I get the expression ED by ES plus ED. So that gives me the fraction of the tax incidence which is faced by buyers explicitly and the fraction of the tax incidence which is faced by sellers explicitly. Now, since we know the explicit relations for the proportion of tax incidence on buyers and sellers, let's do some special cases. So what happens is we might have a situation where the goods have elasticity of demand equal to zero. This essentially means that even if price of that good changes, my demand for that good will not change. These are actually necessary goods. So let's say there is a very important medicine that you need to take every day and the price of that good drops, you won't exactly increase your consumption of that medicine. Neither will you decrease the consumption of that medicine if the price of that medicine goes up. So whatever changes uh, there are in the price of that good, you don't change the demand for those goods. So this is a necessary, this is a necessary good. For necessary goods, we have elasticity of demand equal to zero. Now we knew that the proportion of tax paid by sellers is ED by ES plus ED. So this is the expression that we derived earlier. Now if you put ED equal to zero, you see zero, zero is the answer that we get. So the proportion of tax paid by sellers is zero. But then who pays the tax? The proportion of tax paid by buyers is ED, ES by ES plus ED. So this ED term vanishes because ED equals zero. So we have ES by ES, which is one. So you see, if we are considering necessary goods like medicine, these, me me these medicines are necessary goods. So consumers cannot stop using these goods even if the price increases. So since this is so necessary to them, since this is so important and significant to them, the entire tax burden is faced by buyers. So the buyers face the in, in fact, the buyers pay the entirety of the tax. This is a very uh, key feature of necessary goods. Like if there, are, if there is a tax imposed on necessary goods, then the entire tax burden falls on buyers. Now, consider a situation where we have considered luxury goods. So luxury goods are essentially those goods which are not essentially necessary for buyers. They just buy it for their own comfort or other wetland effects or so. 
So these might include gold jewelry or precious items. These are goods which are not necessarily important to the consumer, but they buy it for their own self uh, self comforts. So for these. Elasticity of demand is very high. In fact, elasticity of demand can can actually move to infinity. So, what happens for these goods is, if the price of this good changes even by a little bit, then the demand for those goods will change a lot. So, you know, if the price of gold falls a little bit, there will be people who will be flocking the gold market to buy gold jewelry. On the other hand, if the price of gold increases by even a little bit, there will be a lot of people who will be exiting the gold market, and the demand of gold jewelry might fall. So this is a key feature of luxury goods. Now, what happens to the proportion of tax is, you see, the proportion of tax paid by sellers, as we know from before, is ED by ES plus ED. Now, what happens is this ED and this ED, these are very big values. These are very big. In magnitude compared to the value of ES. So what happens is this is a very big value, and in the denominator we have a very big value added by a comparatively smaller value. So essentially we have very big values in both the numerator and numerator denominator. So this term itself can tend to one. So what happens is most of the tax is paid by sellers. So for luxury goods, if there's a tax imposed on luxury goods, then a large portion of the tax will be paid by sellers. Comparatively, sellers will have a very very large magnitude or very very large proportion of tax incident on their head. On the other hand, proportion of tax paid by buyers, you see ES by ES plus ED. So ED is a very big term and something added to a very big term is obviously a very big term. So denominator is of a large magnitude. On the other hand, the numerator is not that large of a magnitude. So we essentially have a small number by a big number, which tends to zero. So it's like one by 1100. So it's a number which is very close to zero. So a very small portion of the tax incidence is faced by buyers. So when there is a tax which is imposed on luxury goods, we have major portion of the tax being paid by sellers and a very small portion of the tax is paid by buyers. So you see these expressions for proportion of taxes paid by sellers and buyers, they can also help us analyze which agent of the market will be paying a greater share of the tax incidence if a tax is imposed on necessary goods and luxury goods.